In the rolling hills of Alberta's Athabasca County, you'll find the area known as Amber Valley. Once, this beautiful land was home to a vibrant community of black pioneers, African-American settlers who fled the race riots and discrimination of Oklahoma and Kansas and Tennessee and Mississippi to seek out new lives here. Between 1908 and 1911, more than a thousand of these American immigrants arrived in northern Alberta and Saskatchewan. Most were the descendants of freed slaves. Others, though, came from American First Nations such as the Cherokee and the Choctaw, indigenous people who'd been pushed off their lands and who'd intermarried with their black neighbors. Amber Valley certainly wasn't the only African-American agricultural colony in the West, but it was the largest and the most storied. Even if stories are all that remain. I've written and told some of those stories myself over the years, but it wasn't until this past summer that I actually set out for the community two hours north of Edmonton. The grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the original settlers have long left for the cities. About the only traces of Amper Valley you'll still find are a community hall with a colorful mural, a small museum, and the hauntingly lovely Jordan W. Murphy Cemetery a place to remember the names of those early black pioneers who came here fleeing racism and persecution, not always successfully. We hadn't planned or expected to meet anyone whose family was actually buried here, but we'd only been in the cemetery for a short while when a car pulled up, and we met Kalina, Tosia, and Emmett Wolski Cheney, who were exploring the site looking for the headstone of their great-great-grandmother, Delia Jones, whose daughter, Sophronia, was the grandmother of their own father, Kevin Cheney. We are here to visit our dad's great-grandmother, Delia Jones. Uh, the Cheneys are also descendants from Amber Valley. They were, they lived here for, I think, a good couple of years, maybe a few decades, before some of the family members moved down to Edmonton and that area, which my father comes from Edmonton and we, the Cheneys were basically friend, like family with all the Joneses and Sings. They all knew each other and were very close here. But the coincidences didn't stop there. As it happened, just a few months earlier, I'd actually given a speech in the Senate about one of Delia's other daughters, Effie Jones. You see, Effie defied cultural norms and expectations and married a man named Sohan Singh Bular. Sohan Singh Bular, Sam to his friends, was one of Alberta's very first Sikh settlers. He left his home in the Punjab when he was just 18 and arrived in Alberta in 1907. He worked at first as a farm laborer until he'd saved enough money to buy his own farm. He married Effie Jones in 1926. To judge by photographs, she was strikingly beautiful. He was very handsome and their multicultural marriage seems to have been a happy and successful one. They had seven children and farmed together until they moved to Edmonton in 1953. After I gave that speech, I'd heard from all kinds of Effie and Sam's descendants, who'd sent me pictures of Delia and of her husband, Jason Calvin Jones, pictures of their great-great-grandparents that the Wolski Cheney kids had never seen until we met in the cemetery that day. And thanks to the strange serendipity and synchronicity of our meeting, I was able to tell them that their great-great-grandmother Delia hadn't been African-American herself, but rather a member of the Choctaw Nation, who had traveled far from her home territory to become the matriarch of an amazingly talented and multicultural African-Canadian dynasty. It's really cool to, to step back into history and see like where our ancestors came from on that side of our family history. As we mark Black History Month this year, I keep thinking back to the quiet summer beauty of Amber Valley and all the hopes and dreams it represented. I keep thinking back to the courage of those early African-American pioneers who risked everything in the hopes, sometimes realized, sometimes not, of finding their own promised land in Canada. And I keep thinking about the richly tangled branches of that Jones family tree, which teach us that black history is Canadian history, that Canadian history is black history, that our stories overlap and interweave and speak to each other and that generations on, we are something new and different, a community, a nation that our great-great-grandparents could never have foreseen or imagined. A story of unexpected accidents and chance meetings, of courage and luck, and of memories lost and found.